Hello. Hello and welcome to the Fantastic Birthday Edition. Special edition Fantastic Adventures is one. So, all good birthday celebrations start off with some fizz. We're going to start off with our, our fizz. For those of you with have been with our channel since the start, you might remember our video 12 months ago, almost to the day. We've released a video every week on a Friday at 5 o'clock for a whole year. Wow. Um, this is our video, last video uh, for the year. Tomorrow, officially, is, the, is a four-year-old. We started off with a nice bottle of Bollinger last year. But as we've owned a camper van for the last 12 months, we can longer afford Bollinger. So, we have English sparkling wine instead. <laughs> to celebrate so what have you got coming up on our birthday surprise um hopefully no accidents with the popping cork yeah i have to come back to this one sec so wine of england english sparkling grand vintage brute 2010 Woo. happy birthday fantastic adventures so cheers happy anniversary First year. Birthday? Anniversary? I don't anniversary, know. Anniversary, birthday. Whichever. It's happy, one year in. Happy anniversary birthday to Fantastic Adventures. One year old. Cheers to us and for you guys for sticking with us. Yeah. Thank you to all of our subscribers. If you haven't got a drink, go and grab one now and join us in a celebratory birthday drink. 1,700 subscribers we've got nearly. Wow. That's 1,697 more than I thought we'd ever have. <laughs> yeah, we started this channel to promote our van and to give it a bit of a, like... There's not much information it was when we first bought it. We thought we'd try and help people, but it's actually grown and we've really enjoyed making the videos. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, there's always something that you've been interested in, hasn't it? And you've always made videos, and especially during lockdown when it was harder to see family, we'd make little videos and then put them privately on YouTube to share with family members and stuff. And then it was, you know, we watched so much YouTube buying the van that we thought, well, do we dare share it with the wide world? A great way to keep up with uh, what we've been doing anyway. So I hope you've enjoyed. So this week's video, what are we doing? Well, first of all, we're going to give you a profile on one of Fantastic Adventures. So one of our most popular members. We're going to give you a bit of a bit of a profile on that on that one member. Yeah, we were going to put it to a vote to see which one of the three of us you wanted to know most about, but we figured we knew who'd win. So yeah, we're going to so do it's this. Ian, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a special profile on one of our members in, in one second. We're also going to give you some top tips for travelling with dogs. We get asked loads and loads of questions about travelling with dogs. Um, particularly after the NEC show, lots of people new to the hobby and camping. So we're going to show you again our top five things that we like to do with Molly to keep her comfortable when she's travelling with us. And then we're going to talk a little bit towards the end of the video about what we've got coming up over the next few months, including some European travel. Yes, finally. Right, profile on Fantastic Adventures. Let's go. Okay, so... Who is the special profile feature on? Which one of Fantastic Adventures is it? I hope we have flashing spotlights going and then it's just going to stop on the person who it is. It's very easy. <whistles> Come here. Come on. Come on then. Come on. Special anniversary special. Come and sit down. Sit on the chair with us. Of course, it's Molly. She's allowed in the chair today. It's a the special crowd anniversary. Pleaser. So, the star of the show. Molly has been definitely our star of the show. We get lots of love and questions for Molly. She's been recognised in the street and she's very popular, as you can probably imagine. Most dogs are, if they're cute. Um, and she's been a brilliant travel companion. So we're going to give you a bit of a feature on her so you can learn a little bit more about her and uh, what she's been up to in her seven years of life. Oh, so seven. You can start. When do we get Molly? So we got Molly in October of 2014. She was born in the... August, so we got her straight from the breeder as a as a young pup. As a puppy. Don't worry, we will sh cut to some footage and show you Molly when she was a puppy. We have got lots of footage of her when she was a pup. She so you can see that. Cute. Warning is she was very cute, yeah.
The first night we got it, we lost it. Um, yeah, <laughs> so, we? yeah. Um, we basically got Molly, took her home. In our house, previous house, we had a wine rack. Thank you, you didn't really cuddle, that's nice. So we had a wine rack. That's one of the reasons we bought the house. It sounded fancy, but we never used it for wine. We just used to store orange squash in it till Christmas. And we came downstairs in the morning and we couldn't find Molly anywhere. She was secure in the kitchen, couldn't find her. She was a tiny puppy. We spent f f five minutes looking for her and panicking, thinking she'd escaped. <laughs> we had no idea where she'd gone in a cupboard or no way she could have escaped. Literally no way she could have yeah. escaped. We were like totally confused. We eventually found her actually in the wine rack. Sleeping in the wine rack. Curled up at the yeah. bottom, hidden away in the corner. She was tiny. She just about fitted inside. So that's one story. We'll tell you three very quick stories about her. Second one, Jaws, when she nearly got stolen. Oh yeah, shortly after that, I think, because we'd not had a dog in the garden. We, we did used to have a dog before Molly and obviously we hadn't had a dog for a while and so there'd been no dog in the garden and we hadn't had it that long. Um, it was quite rural where we lived, a big uh, kestrel or buzz, not a kestrel, sorry, a, a buzzard flew in and it swooped, it swooped down, went to grab her, she was in the garden, but literally just as I walked out, so it just flew away. So Molly's near That's miss. Good. And we also nearly lost her a few weeks after she was she was allowed off the lead. We took her to a country park and it was really frosty. It was over the winter after she'd just been born. And someone had been throwing bread for the ducks and oh. Molly's really partial to bread. She loves bread. And the ice was really thin. It was right in the middle of a pond or a lake, sorry. And it was the water was quite deep. Molly went out uh, to go and get the bread. She wouldn't come back no matter what we did. Oh, and there was God, it was horrendous. 20 people on the side shouting to come back, frightened she was going to fall in through the ice. Just she... waiting for the ice to crack and fall through. She managed to eat all the bread and then come back safely without breaking the ice, so we were very it's happy. It's no wonder I'm a nervous wreck, isn't it? <laughs> really, when when you regale these stories, it's it's no wonder. So this is Molly. Yep, she's our Border Collie. She's seven years old. We've both had Border Collies before, even before we met, and then we've had Border Collies before we had Molly. Um, but she is definitely the most cleverest border collie we've had. Uh, she's really, really clever. Um, she's also the most cuddly, but she's also the most, um, <laughs> what's the word? Um, savage. Savage, <laughs> yeah. She's also, when she's uh, when she wants to be, she can be a, a little monkey. What is that saying? When she's nice, she's really nice. But when <laughs> she's bad, she's really horrible. Yeah, but um, no, she's a great dog, really good travelling companion. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons when we got a camper van, we wanted to make sure we could obviously take Molly with us. We didn't for the first few months. No, the first few months we, well, we were a bit we were scared. Just trying to get to grips with it. And also, I think we've been a while without a dog, so we... Uh, and we didn't have a van or anything before with our previous dogs. We sort of forgot how um, dog friendly places can be and adaptable and how adaptable dogs are. And, um, you yeah. know, a lot of places welcome them, don't they? Yeah. Even one, restaurants and things. One of the biggest things is they're just comfortable to be with you. So if you do, you th if you are thinking of buying a camper van, we'll share our top five tips in a second. But if you are thinking of getting a camper van or a motor, motor, motor home or a caravan, and you're not sure about your dog, honestly, they absolutely love it. Um, she's totally comfortable coming away with us. She gets walked all the time. It gets us outside and mobile. It's one of the best things we could have done. So if you haven't got a dog, get one. If you've got one, don't be worried about taking <laughs> or a Or just camper. borrow one. I, I I would be an advocate for borrowing <laughs> or sharing a dog. Dog share is a good option. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we'll cut to our top five tips for travelling with dogs. So Molly's oh. likes and dislikes. Molly likes... Food. She will do anything for food. Oh, yeah, anything for a biscuit. <laughs> yes. And as we said, she does love some bread. Um, she's a bit. She's very partial to people food. I think she actually thinks she's a person. She also likes um, chasing things, particularly. Um, there's a few words that we can say for things that she likes to chase, which will trigger her into looking for them. One's begins with squirt. <laughs> and ends in Errol. Okay. <laughs> you see, she's already got a bit twitchy. Um, Thank you. And also, as uh, Ian will uh, testify, she likes to chase Land Rovers. Yeah, completely likes to chase Land Rovers. And she managed just to, to detect the diff wine on a Land Rover from about a mile away. And then as soon as they come near, she tries to chase them. Only Land Rovers, no other vehicle, just any Land Rover, which is quite funny. Um, I think maybe something to do with the farm when she was a puppy. Um, and also, she loves swimming. Anybody who's seen our videos, she absolutely loves swimming. She does love swimming. Yeah. Yes. What does she not like? She does not like uh, loud noises. Yep. Sudden noises, strangers, people that wear high vis, <laughs> <laughs> people that come in van. To get one thing that it did take ages. She has a. Um, she hates delivery people like yep. the post um, people. 
post, post or people. anything like that. So you yeah, she, she post um, uh -oh. apparently there's a note in the post person's van to say watch out for the dog at our house, which is a bit embarrassing. Yeah, um, that's not in the van. That's actually in the post office sorting office. Yeah, yeah, you have to have a note about her. So. Savage dog. Hopefully they might, they might might not watch this video and um, see it. Yeah, so she always is is on high alert if somebody outside with a delivery van, you know, the sliding door. So when we got this, every time the door opened or closed, she was jump. It even though she was in the van or stood next to the van, it took her ages to get over <laughs> that, didn't now. it? You're boring. Her. She's heading off. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Even I'm bored now. Sorry. Take take a hint. Just one quick thing to mention, Molly's parents. So Molly's dad was a working farm sheepdog and Molly's mum was a breeding dog, a pedigree border collie. So yeah, she came from pedigree stock, but her dad was a working dog and her mum was a pedigree breeding dog. So she's got a bit of working dog and a bit of pet. Haven't you, Mum? So one of the things we get asked quite a lot is how and where does Molly travel whilst we are um, on the move? Whereabouts does she sit in the van and how is she secured? God. So we do have a, um, like a seatbelt harness type thing, um, which we use sometimes, but more in the car just because we don't like her to sit on the seats Seats, yeah. in the van. And if we're traveling for a couple of hours, she does like to move around and sit in a couple of different places. Exactly where she's sat now, funny enough. Yeah, she likes to I sit love. there by the door or um, under the table there. So what we simply do to secure her is fasten a seatbelt and then She's got one of these leads with it's various a halty, isn't it? Halty lead. A, a halty lead, yeah. lead with figure a big, a big double-ended one that you can basically attach. Yeah, it's got different. Good, and it. then so fastener on there. Fastener on. So she's basically got room to move. Sit on the floor. Yeah. Under the chair. Um, she can move a little bit, but not too much, so it interferes with the driving or gets in the way. Exactly. Yeah. So basically, she can sit there. She normally sits there with her back again. You can see the mark on the mat. She normally sits there and that's where she likes to have her back against something when we're traveling or she likes to sit under the table under there and that keeping her on the lead there like that means that she is nice and secure and safe legal requirement for traveling with dogs means they have to be secure and not be able to interfere with the driver so that's exactly where she likes to sit when we're traveling um, and so she's quite comfortable down there so we'll try and zoom down excuse the floor he's hoovering um, and that's where she's comfortable for traveling she knows that so now she thinks we're going on an adventure <laughs> oh. but really simple really easy obviously different dogs different require different requirements but once you can test your dog and it's comfortable it's exactly where molly likes to sit so she sits in this corner curled up attached yeah. to the lead just in case and then she's very happy isn't she yeah a lot of people have maybe crates um for their animals we've it's not something that we've ever had uh, for molly and obviously the size of it would have to be quite a big crate but uh, this works this works for us so one thing that i found really useful and caroline uh, came up with this idea because it's really really helpful for me uh, molly has dry food so it depends on your dog if it has you know wet food in a can or has dry food whatever so we take molly's food pre-weighed out into bags so how many days she's going so it's really easy you just take the bag open it up pour it into a bowl and that's great she has breakfast then she has dinner she has like a chewy bar at lunchtime so two meals a day in that bag they're packed up with molly's stuff it's a really easy way clean and, and hygienic for transporting her food and making sure you've got the measurements easy easily weighed out Another tip, if you don't want to put it into food bags, if you're you know, concerned about the environmental impact, etc., you can always put it into, into uh, dog bags, what I call them. Um, dog bags that you carry the dog stuff around in. So put into that instead, and you can then obviously reuse them as well for when you pick up after your dog. So that's an alternative. Rather than using food bags, you can always put them into, into dog bags as well. Uh, poo bags, I think they're called, not sure. <laughs> anyway, that's a useful tip. She knows where that is already, doesn't she? Like, she's <laughs> she come to check it she's out. She's come to get into it. What's it called? Um, this is my, um, Molly's Pooch Onesie, um, which if there you are different brands available. Uh, yeah, this is the one that Molly has, therefore I will read it out. <laughs> um, it's basically like a big uh, microfiber blanket with a zip and a head hole, and she sits in it, you zip her in, and then she sits in it 20 minutes. Um, she's, if she's wet and muddy, it dries her out it's good because it is quite big and just to put out on the floor if it's wet um or a bit chilly and she can sit in it but yeah it's a giant dog towel isn't it they zip up zip up inside we'll show that on the video yeah. for now we'll try and try culture a clip of her sat inside it so you can see exactly what it does but she loves it she goes inside she gets a rub and it's like being on like in a nice 
warm environment she feels very safe and secure yeah and if you've not got one of these then i would just suggest like an old bath towel or something just something to put on the floor that or, doesn't work um well it would protect your floor and does dry them off a little bit as we found out when we forgot this the other week and we had to use a towel basically don't be tight get one of these they're expensive but they're worth every penny Something that's really, really good to take for your dog is find the dog's favourite toy and put it in the van and it makes the dog feel at home. Molly's favourite toy is now this monkey we got from the NEC. She absolutely loves it. Um, as you can probably see. Hello. Is that your monkey? She wants it back. Absolutely loves the monkey. It's her favourite thing in the world. So we're going to take it in the van with us. We've always taken one of her toys or a couple of her toys with us. This makes the dog feel at home. So as you can see, she's having great fun with the monkey there right now. Uh, so really useful thing if it's uh, dark, if you're taking the dog out last thing at night or first thing in the morning, is don't forget a torch. We usually have a head torch just hanging on the... Um, Seatbelt Seat, holder. Uh, yeah, seatbelt holder. Um, there. Um, I've not been in this van before, sorry. No, it's my first time in the van, sorry. It just feels like so long Show ago. us what you do then. Um, Put on your head, come on. Let's do proper camping. Oh, what? I never wear it on my head, as you can tell. <laughs> Should I turn it on? Yeah. Is it on? No, the batteries have gone. Oh, it's what? Been, it's been sat in the van. You've just winter. made me look a fool on purpose, haven't you? <laughs> I didn't realise, What a sorry. cheap That's trick. Cool. Anyway, keep a torch by the door, really handy. We've got an outside light, but it's good for when you go off and Molly obviously wants to go outside. Especially at night. Caroline takes her out at night. I take her out in the morning. We have a yeah, special room. That's the deal. Yeah. That is the now deal. Now she's seen the torch, she wants to go out. And now she she's thinks like, it's time to go. Great acting, Molly. Great acting. <laughs> <laughs> she's not amused. <laughs> One thing you might notice is we don't bring a bed for Molly. Um, she doesn't have a particular bed or blanket. She sleeps pretty much where she sleeps while we're travelling. Um, but usually she sneaks up onto the chair once we've gone to bed. So we hope you found our video useful this week on travelling with dogs. So it's questions we get asked loads, especially about where you put the dog when you're travelling, especially in a van. So I hope you found it useful. Um, so let's talk about where we're going. Final bit of the video. Where are we going? We are going to... All over the place. Yeah. <laughs> we've got plans coming up in April. Yes, we're going to... So over the next few months, we're going to Derbyshire. Yeah. Aren't we? Um, Norfolk. To Norfolk. Yeah. Yes. We've, there's lots of places we found online recommended by people. Yeah. And in June, we're going to Europe. We won't share the full details of where yet because we're still in the final stages of the planning. But fingers crossed, everything going to plan. We're going to be in Europe for the longest trip we've ever been on. Ooh. It's our first trip in the van to Europe, so we're really excited. Uh, yeah. we've, we've been to Europe quite a bit before touring, but not in the, not in the camper van. At the moment, we're just um, doing some research on uh, the different places that we need that we can go and what the rules are. We, what we there were some rules about um, air pollution um, in France, yeah. yeah but I think we're okay from where we're going, but we'll have a look and see. Yeah. So yeah, it's just good to good to check it out. And also, if we're travelling through a few different countries, we're undecided whether or not to take Molly. Yeah. So we we also got another reason why we're going to potentially leave Molly behind and go to Europe. We'll talk about that in a future video because Molly's going to go and do some work, uh, isn't she? She's going to become a uh, a teaching dog. But we'll tell you more about that and hopefully introduce you to who she's teaching, maybe in a future video. Um. We're we'll definitely get taking bikes for this. One thing we've said, we're going to get bikes. We're going to get a tow bar yeah, to the van. Tow bar. So anybody that's got a tow bar, yeah, and a bike and a bike rack, we need bike racks. We need to know. Yeah, if anyone's got any recommendations for bike racks, tow bar mounted bike racks. Tow bar mounted bike. That's let, it. Isn't yeah, it? that let you open the back doors would be really, really handy. Thank you. Yeah, we know which tow bar we're getting, but it's the tow, the tow bar mounted uh, bike rack we need to know about. So yes. you should hopefully see lots more bikes in our videos going forward. <laughs> Some off road. <laughs> someone not room. mine yeah i'll be tootling along with a french stick in mine yeah so um again really please let us know where you've been where you're going any of your plans in the videos we love reading people's comments it gives us ideas and then we can go and visit places as well so yeah we've uh, we've had some really good ideas from some of our viewers yeah um i would like to see flamingos real life flamingos in the wild they're always my favorite thing to see i think you might be able to see them in the south of france so if anybody knows please can you um please can you tell us so we hope you've enjoyed this video. It's something a bit different. It's a full year anniversary of Fantastic Adventures. Hopefully many more years to come. And we'll try and keep to our schedule of one video a week every Friday, five o'clock, just to keep that momentum going. And uh, say thank you so much to everybody who's taken the time to subscribe. If you haven't, please do it. Click below, click the like button, click the little bell icon. It means you get notifications when our videos go live. That's pretty much it, isn't it? I think so. Anything else? Um, 
buy the real stuff. Yeah, we're not very impressed with this English fizz, I'm afraid. Um, it'll be back to beer next week, just in case you're wondering. So that's the end of the video. Thank you to everybody who's been watching us and giving us lots of support over the last 12 months. Here's to hopefully another 12 months of great travel. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>